Noah, you actually wrote a book about social justice. When you hear the president say, we've got to get tougher at the border, it's a crisis there, what's your reaction? I think that the administration has a real credibility gap when it comes to the issues on the border. They've been calling the situation a crisis since before it was a crisis. They declared a national emergency when all publicly available data suggests that there wasn't one. Today, they're on much firmer ground, uh, but what they need to achieve is legislative solutions. We know all of this that was the problem during the uh, separate the family separation policy. The new element of that was its deterrent effect. That failed. We've clearly seen now that there was no deterrent effect. The push and pull factors that are forced people out of the Northern Triangle and here still exist. They're only more exacerbated. What they need to do is address these court situations that force the separation of minors after 72 hours when you can't process these families coming over, which the system was not designed to do. You need Congress to do that. And I don't think anybody wants to play ball. Republicans didn't and Democrats certainly don't, not with an administration that has no interest in compromising the issue. Uh, Hans, take me to the White House, to the president. We know that uh, build the wall immigration was a core issue for him in becoming the president of the United States. But unless he figures out a plan to fix it, how can he keep this a core issue? It's on his watch. Well, he can try to blame Congress, which, which, which is what he does at nearly every stop. And their plan is pretty clear, and that is to circumvent Congress while they're blaming him. Now, the question is, is that plan constitutional? Is it legal under the Constitution? Is it legal under international law? Well, you know, in the crush of all this news, sometimes we miss little nuggets. And when the president was down there on the border and Klex goes with him, listening very closely, next to him and Kirsten Nelson was Lieutenant General Todd Semenite. He's the head of the Army Corps of Engineers. Semenite publicly pledged that they would have close to 300 miles of the border built by 2020. The president put that number at 400 miles of the border. So they're going to be diverting funds. They're going to try to do it. This will face congressional challenges, constitutional challenges as well. And then more to Julia's point, when you look at what they're trying to do with all these families that are coming in, they want, and this is something that Kirsten Nielsen supported and really put in place, was to have a situation where families could apply for asylum in the U.S. but not on U.S. soil, and they would make those applications when they're still in Mexico. That seems to be a bit of perversion of traditional asylum application, but so far they're getting away with it, and uh, that's part of the plan. So. They have a plan. It's just a question of whether or not it's legal, guys. Uh, Jacob, the president over the weekend said we need to get rid of chain migration. Uh, that is the visa lottery uh, asylum system that actually his wife Melania Trump used uh, to bring her family here. Here's what he had to say. The asylum program is a scam. Some of the roughest people you've ever seen people that look like they should be fighting for the UFC. <laughs> they read a, a little page given by lawyers that are all over the place. I am very worried that I will be accosted. If I am sent back home, no, no, he'll do the accosting. He's not talking about people trying to get in illegally. He's actually talking about people who are trying to apply for asylum. According to U.S. law, like you you have spoken to people who are going through the process what are they what, what do they think when they hear the president say things like this asylum seekers are doing it legally what would you say i mean if you came here to seek asylum and he, your, your your children were taken away from you and you were put into uh, a federal penal institution and your kid was put into a cage under a mylar blanket on the floor like i you know saw during the um, separation period and why don't we hear president trump talk this way uh, about the biggest group of people who come to this country uh, illegally and overstay their visas, primarily uh, from Asia. He talks this way uh, about people from Latin American countries, uh, people that don't look like him. Uh, and, you know, frankly, he said it when he came down the escalator uh, uh, at his campaign announcement. He called Mexicans rapists and criminals. We know how the president feels uh, about people coming uh, from the southern border. Uh, the question is, will the policy shift uh, at all at this point? How much tougher uh, can it really get. As Noah said, the underlying drive here is to reform two laws, one that would allow the administration to indefinitely detain uh, migrant families uh, over the course of the pendency of their of their asylum process, and the other would be to turn around undocumented migrants coming here to seek asylum uh, that are children and send them back to their home countries uh, immediately. Uh, and that's in lieu or instead of uh, sending foreign aid to those countries to stop the push factors. Uh, and immigration activists uh, and attorneys uh, and people on the ground will tell you that that is an inhumane uh, solution. Eddie, what's your take here? We do need comprehensive immigration reform. 
Does the president want to change our immigration system or just blow it up? Wants to blow it up. Wants to blow it up, and for what reason? I mean, look, Stephen Miller and his ilk uh, are behind this in some ways. Uh, the crisis is Noah. Uh, uh, I think rightly laid out, uh, is in some ways manufactured uh, by his own policies. Uh, it's not full, the country's not full when it comes to Melania's parents. It's not full when it comes to, you know, this is what Jacob was saying. It, this is a particular policy aimed at trying to address the demographic shifts in the country. It, when we say it's red, beet, red meat for his base, we know exactly what we mean. We're talking about it at a certain level of abstraction. He's playing to people's fears and hatreds, his xenophobia. So he wants to blow it up. And it's not about undocumented workers. It's about legal immigration in some significant way. Undocumented workers is just a portal to a broader question. He wants to blow it all up. And we have to ask for what reason. And to me, it's just fundamentally, fundamentally wrong. And let's not, be, let's not forget that two babies have died because of this nonsense. Then, then why dance around this? Why not put Stephen Miller in the job? Stephen Miller gets the benefit of being the Wizard of Oz behind all of this and, and pulling the strings. Why doesn't he just go straight forward and choose someone like Stephen Miller, whose policies these are? Because I'm looking at Twitter, people saying, we're glad Kirsten Nielsen is gone. These policies have been so horrible. Guess what? You got a really good chance you're going to get somebody significantly more draconian. Well, I mean, if you listen to the, the Trump element and the, the Trump base, and they weren't happy with Christian Nielsen either. They thought she was too accommodationist. And they don't think that Donald Trump is going to put someone in there who is, who is more hardline than them. Look, I, I think the administration's immigration policies have been pretty abhorrent. The notion that he went before a Jewish audience and said we need to reform our asylum policy speaks to a profound ignorance of how Jewish voters think. Uh, however, there is a humanitarian issue here that has been, needs to be addressed by law enforcement. We have people who are dying in custody, and it's not because they're being ill-treated in custody. It's because they're being ill-treated along the way into custody. Uh, there is a crisis on the border in a humanitarian sense, and it behooves us to address it proactively and not to assume that this is just somebody who's, who's acting on, on racist impulses. He may be, but as we've said, the primary, dri the primary drivers of illegal immigration are from South Asia and East Asia. They don't look like Donald Trump either. Okay, then before we go, I need you to tell us this, Jacob. You are the person who spends the most amount of time at the border. The president called a national emergency 50 days ago. What has happened in the last 50 days? What is it actually like there? Because for the majority of us that are either sitting in a newsroom or watching the news, we're, li we're listening to two narratives. What's the truth? Well, he's made it worse. I mean, he's made a legitimate humanitarian crisis worse based on uh, their policies since he declared this national emergency. I think it was back uh, in February by doing things that uh, Julia Ainsley laid it out pretty well, uh, like metering people at ports of entry, which forces people to go in between, taking um, the resources away from places where folks could legitimately declare asylum at ports of entry uh, and moving those resources, actual human bodies, 750 of them uh, at this point, uh, to locations that are not there. Um, and just one thing about what, what, what Noah said, don't forget, Felipe and Jacqueline, the two young children who died, and these autopsies have now come out. Their, con their, their conditions, their situation was uh, made worse uh, based on their time in immigration detention. It wasn't that they were uh, only sick and came over into this country uh, and just happened to die when they got here. The conditions that young migrant children and their families are being held in right now uh, made the situation worse for them. Uh, and they don't have to just be in cages like the ones we're looking at on the screen uh, right now from the separations. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.